Angel's excited because he found how to turn it into Spanish. So now you're finding your words in Spanish, bud? Okay. I just have to write them down. <laughs> what, do you, what do you have? What do you write your Spanish in? Yeah. Another week of homeschool. I didn't get fired. So you didn't get week. fired. Okay. Okay. But <laughs> but you fired me like eighteen. I have. Since. I have. Cause I have a dream. And <laughs> whatever. And you sometimes you try to do your own thing with that dream. Whatever. But that's okay. Cause this is what marriage is working together as a team, right? Yeah. You guys, this week, kind of, sort of, not what I had planned it to be. Uh, partly because you got sick. Your friend was sick. Monday, Tuesday, I was out. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Sunday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, I was out. I was single dad. You were single dad. Yeah. No. No friend. Yeah. No. It's hard out here. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Sprouts. Pick yours up, Kendall. Let me see yours. Oh, you have. <laughs> you got a lot of sproutage right there. Nice. So yours are looking good, Kendall. So I was all super excited coming off of um, releasing our first video of the new Falco family. And um, yeah, I had all these big plans for this week of homeschool and um, I got sick. <laughs> so that is never fun whatsoever. But he was very helpful, very helpful, and um, and helped me to get the rest that I needed to just kind of get back on track. But I think that it says big things about what it is like in homeschool, for me at least, um, to make these plans and then the plans just kind of don't go the way that you had intended them to. But this is a lot of the reason why I wanted to do or document in this way because just because things don't go as planned doesn't mean it doesn't still end up very beautiful. Savannah's over here making alphabet cookies. I made them all the other day. Yeah. <laughs> this one or this one? I think my biggest memory from this week was being completely sick Monday morning, um, but waking up and Brian whispering to me that the kids were in the schoolroom finishing up their schoolwork. They had waken up early. I wasn't happy about it. You weren't happy about it? No, Cameron decided that he would like to get done school earlier, so he started setting his alarm for like 5.30. <laughs> And he gets up, got Kendall up, which I don't know how he did because it's impossible. Kendall takes forever to wake up. He's always the last one to get up. And then he got Savannah up and they're all out here. They're tiptoeing around the house at six o'clock in the morning. You can hear they're trying to be quiet, but you can hear them peeking in the room. It was good that he did it, but not good for my it sleep. It was great. independent and take ownership over their studies. You guys know this. I've talked about this many times before. And I always express that to them that I want them to be able to use the tools that um, that we introduce in homeschool for them to be able to explore. And if they have questions or if they have things that they're working on, they don't always need me to continue on. So I think this was a prime example of that because mommy was done. Mommy was no good. <laughs> but they did it. But they did. And then when I got 
got up and came into the schoolroom and Cameron, he turned to me and he was like, Mommy, we, we did everything that we could do by ourselves and now Silent we just reading. have to do the things um, that with you. So they had done their binder work, they had done their quiet reading time, they had um, done their devotions, their writing, uh, their um, language study. Yo no comprendo la pregunta. Yo no comprendo la pregunta. El estudiante, no. la computa. La medicina. If they forget the lake. Yeah, so. I might have to hide that phone next week. No. <laughs> it will be fine, Brian. That is what we're teaching them. That is what we're training them to do. So even though the week didn't start off the way that I wanted it to, um, it just gave me a moment to realize that what I have been intending for them is actually working mm -hmm. so that was really nice Tuesday we just kind of moved along this is one of the reasons why I'm really 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 big on reading in our homeschool we did our book year last year which really amplified like our reading just large pockets of time for reading and that's always my substitute plan if I don't feel well or if something else comes up that is what we do. We just spend our days kind of reading and writing. I forgot what my point was. You're independent. <laughs> yes. <laughs> They're independent. Independent kids. Yeah. So um, they got a lot of that done, which was nice. And then by the time I was ready to jump back in there, I didn't feel bad. I didn't feel like I needed to catch up or anything. Um, I did go back through their binders and check on their work and check their writing and things like that, see if there was anything I needed to help with. But for the most part, um, it was just two days of extreme independence in homeschool and I loved it. This week, I took the lady to go and get glasses. How did that go? It went well. She actually did very well. We tried on a bunch of really cute glasses. Yeah, that's a cute shape. <laughs> I like the sun. Oh, that's cute too. <laughs> I'll think about it. I'm thinking if I like it. What do you think? <laughs> Is that your third pair? the regular things that happen uh, throughout your everyday family life. I try to let those things add to our homeschool days. So I try to leave plenty of room in our plans uh, for things like that. So something like that is the prime example of what I will use to throw in many lessons here and there. So one of the things that I wanted to do was just kind of add in a quick little lesson on vision. So that is something that I'm currently working on to add to next week's lesson. So that should be exciting. And then that way I take that real life experience and join it with um, a little lesson to evoke some questions and get some curiosity flowing and um, just kind of weave that throughout our homeschool days. So, of course, we have continued on with our botany unit, um, studying our plants that are all around us. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to do was plant more seeds. So, we had been looking at a project to plant seeds inside of eggshells and give them faces. So, this week we actually got to do that when Nana came over. So, my mom recently <laughs> retired and... Um, she has been coming over to hang out with the kids. I know they've been enjoying that. 
Which is the best. I feel like when you can get different um, family members and friends involved mm. in your homeschooling experience, it makes it all the more rich, I feel like. So she helped us uh, plant our seeds and then she also read a little bit of Trees in Our World. Um, it's one of the books I have from our Good and the Beautiful curriculum that um, I got along with our botany unit. So she read a little bit of that to us. Some of the people who smelled the flowers would call the tree a honey locust. That name, Hubble Ever, really belongs to trees with smaller leaves, longer pods, and no, cluster of No, that's enough, that's enough. Put them in. Put them in. Put them in. Done. Good. What? Okay, I'll do the angry one next. <laughs> Very good, Kendall. Halfway? Yep, halfway. Is that halfway? That looks good, child. Soon we will. working on garden journals. My intention for our garden or grow or botany unit originally was to plant a square garden. And those plans definitely got all derailed. I mentioned that before. But um, as I change and have adapted things, um, I thought it would be a good idea just to draw up a quick um, journal for the kids. It's just Probably. a printout. Yeah, so I like to do printables and I share those. You guys know this over on my Patreon space with my patron fam. Um, I'm not big on announcing printables and things because they literally are just things that I use in our homeschool to enrich our studies. And they're never, I think the key for me in building a printable is I want to leave things open-ended mm -hmm. for how um, lessons can be adjusted or take a different route. Um, I try not to get too specific with instructions. I just want to have some space that we can just go off on whatever tangent based on the kids' ideas or, or my ideas. So um, that was something I wanted to just kind of toss together really quickly was a um, journal just give them space to study whatever we had around us so that worked out really well because our plans changed and we no longer um, were going to do a square garden but now we have all these plants around us that we can study and measure and um, pay attention to their behaviors and so the journal just kind of gives us a nice little space to be able to jot things down. Of course I never really know if something is going to work out well. I just left some spaces and used a little you know artwork on the sides of the journals and things but uh, when we got started uh, planting our seeds one of the first things we did was I, I thought to myself wow let, let's just kind of sprinkle a couple of the different seeds um, on the first page of their journal and they can take a look at them with the magnifying mm -hmm. glass. We have a little magnifying glass that I put some googly eyes on and we call him Marvin the magnifying glass. Oh, I didn't know he had a name. You didn't know he had a name? No, I didn't. tomato and lettuce and what was that one carrots um, so I had 
those three types of seeds and I put them um, sprinkled them on their journal and then I just used a piece of tape to put over top of them so that they could stick to their journals and then I had them sketch it out and write it out yeah, yeah. they like that yeah. yeah so that worked out really well this week I gave the kids their journals mm -hmm. so something different that I'm doing than I have in the past is um, I have an extreme love for composition notebooks and so up until now I just stack up the composition notebooks and ever since we've been married yeah random, <laughs> random notebooks yeah a ton of composition notebooks and the kids have had one for each subject but this time around I really wanted to focus on having one notebook um, that is their journal um, where they are to explore and discover the world around them and so as we move through our lessons they have this journal and their mission is just to record the things that they want to remember the questions that they have so i gave them their journals this week another thing that we're doing uh, for writing this week is they have been writing veggie tales so i had these um little vegetables that i i think i got them from target yeah. And I assigned each of them a couple of vegetables that have to be their main characters. Mm -hmm. And they can interact with one another's characters. They can add new characters. Mm -hmm. But these are basically like their veggie tales. Dad, this is Lacey and Ellie. Best friend. Okay, so these are your vegetables. You got a beet and a radish. And this is what she's writing her veggie tale about. So they are writing tales about Look, vegetables this is tale. using descriptive Look. language. Okay. Hold on. I'm Lacey and I'm Anna. Oh my goodness. Look at how much you've written. <laughs> yes, next page. Oh my gosh, so good, Savannah. Savannah's a writer. I absolutely love creative writing with my kids. I'm very, I'm often very surprised with how descriptive that they get in their writing, with how much they enjoy writing in general, um, makes me really excited. And even more so because I purposed early on not to give them too many instructions, um, but to give them the freedoms to write and just encourage them to write. This story is going to be mind blown. I, I tend to highlight um, the actual writer of the stories that we read, um, which I felt like would maybe would make them want to be a writer themselves. And so I think I always start off with some kind of extra idea. But Cam seems to really like it. Kendall, <laughs> Kendall had a little bit of trouble, so I, was, I tried to help him this week. So we were both struggling together, trying to figure out how to finish his story about a carrot and a, a lettuce. <laughs> so I think we were trying to make a villain to be broccoli. We tried to work through it. One of the best things about homeschool is just having that ability to just love on them. Be patient with them teacher. as they work through it. Normally when Kendall is struggling, I go over and give him a bunch of kisses, mm -hmm. a whole bunch of hugs. You know, we take a walk around the room yeah. and that seems to brighten him up. So this time around, um, Brian I noticed that he was struggling a little bit. So he came and he sat with him and I was able to kind of um, take a back seat and watch that a bit and, you know. <laughs> all the feels. Yes, all the feels, all the feels. And the to focus. So we've given him Gia Giraffe to see if she can help him focus. Gia Giraffe, your mission is to help Kindle focus. I was working from home that day. Yeah, yeah. he was working from home uh, that day. He was able to just kind of pop in and uh, try to help him through that frustration and we made it through. Why are you having a hard time? Why are you having a hard time? Hello Mr. Corn said Thomas. So what are they gonna talk about? So what's the rest of the story about? Did you start it? So there has to be a problem. In every story there has to be a conflict. So what's the conflict? How about we introduce another character? made it through and Savannah worked on her story. Mm -hmm. She had a beat and a radish. Mm -hmm. One of the main things I do in writing is 
I don't correct them. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. It's just something about I just feel a little strange. I just feel like if I want them to love writing, then I want them to sit down and just spend that time writing. And sure. I just feel not so great about going over to mark up all mm -hmm. of their work. Yeah. And I feel like it just messes up the flow, you know, to go over and say, oh, this is not spelled correctly or um, you need another this or you need another that. Mm -hmm. I, I try not to say it like a couple extra paragraphs or a cu couple just of extra sentences. Let them see sentences. what he creates. Right, what he right. I try yeah. to speak to them in the sense of the story rather than the structure of the writing. Um, and that seems to really work with them. So points for me. Points for you. <laughs> Kendall and I cooked. Right. Cooking is Kendall's love language. Yeah. Food is Kendall's love language. And we've been trying to find something that he's really into. But he's really into cooking, really into eating. So whenever you're in the kitchen, he's always kind of like creeping around, peeking up. <laughs> Instead of, you know, I used to have this thing like, look, get out of the kitchen. Like, no one in the kitchen while I'm trying to get, you know, the food ready. Yeah. So now I'm just trying to get him to jump in and try to include him. You know, yeah. so he has his apron, he has his little chef hat. I think he got a couple Christmases ago. Yeah, and that's like a common mistake that we make as parents, right? Like, um, they, you know that including them is going to take so much more time. Yeah. Um, and so oftentimes you can kind of just um, exclude them from things. But I found that when you practice that extra patience and really pay attention to what they enjoy, you know, <laughs> eventually we're just like, wow, he's always peeking around the corner at dinner time. He's always asking what's for dinner, which is so irritating sometimes. And then I'm like, maybe nothing is wrong with him. Maybe something is wrong with me and how I'm looking at it. Yeah. And so we found that, you know, he really enjoys food. He really enjoys cooking. And that's something that we could do together and that um, he could get better at. Mm -hmm. and, and he can feel loved in that. And there's so yeah. much to learn. Um, so obviously we learn about measurement and things like that, but um, just learning about heat, conduction. Is conduction the right word? Convection? Convection. That's the oven. I'm not doing this. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, it was just really cool to see him, um, to see Brian take the time to enjoy that with him. So that oh, was points? nice. Yes. Points. points. Hey. <laughs> So even though this week definitely didn't go as planned, yeah, we're able to rebound. I mean, I don't think most weeks go as planned. Something yeah, always, they don't. Something always comes up, but yeah, you're right. we were able to, you know, rebound. And, and, and I think it was a really good homeschool week. Like Cameron yesterday, he was like, "This was a good school week." He's and Cam that? yeah, Cameron's usually the one that's like, "Ah, school." But yesterday we're in the room. He was like, "Yeah, this, this week school was good this week." <laughs> and so. Um, so Which yeah, is a common week. misconception. My kids, let me be clear, my kids love to learn, but they still complain. Yeah. Because unfortunately, complaining is like in our nature as human beings. Yeah. And so that's something we still have to deal with. But at the heart of it, they really love doing it. And they always come back and say that yeah. they had a really good time. Yeah. Little, Aww, yeah. he said it was a good school week. See, you got points. <laughs> so, um,. Even though this wasn't quite as I had planned, it's still a great homeschool week nonetheless. So I want to thank you for being here with me again. I'm thankful to be here. It's just good to be here. We have a few moments because the grandparents have the kids right now. So we're going to just hang out together. Mm -hmm. I'm going to edit this video. Yeah. And we will see you next week. Next week. Next I, hope, week. I hope I'm here. I, I hope you're here too. <laughs> Bye.